to break out, you know, to break the chains that have bound us for so many lifetimes, break free, break the, the, the mental loops and programming that has held us down and kept us, kept our focus in mundane areas and in very self-centered areas for who knows how many lifetimes. I want to break it once and for all, not just not just um, theoretically, not just posing as a person that gets it, but I want it to break so that this love can awaken in me, this real love. And I want to feel it as these, um, as you know, the gopis felt. They want to, you know, I want to have a heart that's been deeply touched, you know. Mm. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Live from Govardhan Hill, this is Wisdom of the State, the Daily Spiritual Podcast. I'm your host, Kastuba Das, with our special guest host today. Coming to you live from Vermont, it's the bright light of Vermont herself, Kishori Gopi. Welcome, Kishori Gopi. All right, Bull. Thank you so much for having me back. <laughs> what a gift. What a pleasure. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it's, you, you, we sometimes with Rogu, uh, Rogu, Roganath is roaming the mountains of Nepal right now somewhere. So uh, it's wonderful to have you step in and, you know, fill in. And we also have Linda, Linda, Linda with us today, who's filling in for Mara. Welcome to you, Hi. Linda. Thank you very much. Trying to fill some very big shoes. Mary G does a great job for this whole community. And I know we're all grateful. So I'll do my best to do as try to do as well as she does today. You do a lot for the community too. Linda. <laughs> you got big shoes. <laughs> I was just laughing so hard. <laughs> when we out on the show the other day, uh, a couple of weeks ago, whatever it was, he said, do I have to do everything? Do I have to figure everything out around here? Like, you don't figure out anything. <laughs> Linda figures out everything. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it is uh, kind of true. <laughs> well, but, but, but we miss Robin. You, know, too. He you guys have that. an amazing team. Amazing team. Yeah. It's things are coming together, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Things are really coming together. Uh, you know, in the Sage groups, we got, we always had Braj Bihari there, and Sri Rupa is doing an incredible job. You for Sundari. We got Chapu bringing in Chapu. We got a team that's building up to build up this online academy with Sue mm -hmm. Davy and Carly and and uh, Thomas Hari Bowl and Doyle Garunga and so mm. we're starting to build it out. And yeah. that's that's, a, that's especially because Linda's here. Otherwise, we don't have the bandwidth. Well, it's really all by Krishna's arrangement. So all glories to him. Thank you. Krishna. You know, there's a lot Thank more. You, anyway, maybe this isn't the time to talk about it, <laughs> but. But, you know, we're going up to the Rishikesh Kirtan Fest this year, and we really want to cooperate with them because they reach a lot of people there. Mm -hmm. And we all realize that uh, Wisdom of the Sage is a way to connect people and keep them connected with, you know, with the Sage groups and all that. So we're, we're combining forces uh, this, you know, this coming February, March, and it's a real exciting time up there. So we'll talk that's more about amazing. that. That's mm. yeah. amazing. Glad to hear that's right. happening. I'll yeah. Linda, do we have any announcements today? We do. Um, reminding everyone that if you've ever desired to go to India, this January is the time and we're getting close. We're filling up. The spaces are filling up. I find we have two kinds of people, those who register months in advance or those who register kind of in the last couple of months and we're down to the last couple of months. So okay. um, join Wisdom of the Sages at the beautiful at Govardhan Eco Village for our Light on Wisdom training from January 12th to 24th. If you ever want to have time away from the daily grind to learn yoga wisdom in depth, and have all your questions answered in a supportive environment, this is an opportunity that can't be missed. Raghu also has a 200 hour, 300 hour um, Radunga training, Kirtan training. And one of the most, I just have to personally add my two cents here because last year was my first time there. And one of the best parts of doing this with Wisdom of the Sages is that every morning and every evening, all of the trainings, the Sangha comes together and is together. And right. it's really, really sweet. So um, go to wisdomofthesages.com to check it all out and uh, register. All right. Thank you. Anything else? That's Talk it. To today? Recovery. 
Always uh, Bhakti Recovery is always on the site. Also, wisdomofthesages.com. You can get to the link to all the Bhakti Recovery info or the Bhakti Recovery Group website, bhaktirecoverygroup.com. Great. We don't have a nugget today, but I thought I might just share uh, my day. Please. You know? <laughs> Give us the nectar, Kastula. Well, I was so fortunate today that um, some some people that uh, may have tuned in, we, we posted on the Sage community platform, I guess it was last week, you know, when, you, when you're when you in Vrindavan, Brudge, like this, the, you know, the these holy places, and, you know, a week goes by, and there's so much packed into the week that it feels like it was a very long time ago, but I think it was just a week ago or so that we um, we posted this Talk that Raghunath and I did with such an Swami Swami uh, at Govinda Kund on the on you know which is uh, right by the side of Govardhan Hill. So this is, you know, these these places are written about in in Srimad Bhagavatam in the tenth canto. You know, that this is the place where Lord Indra, you know, kind of understood that who Krishna is, and uh, and, and and in all humility he he. He kind of bowed down to him and and um, mm. bathed him with his elephant <laughs> and mm. and really you know expressed his heart the way that in in one sense all living beings need to do at some point we got to get right with God we got to realize okay you know I, I, you're not the tyrant I've been trying to be the tyrant and uh, you've been kind and loving and in control all along and I let go now you know so the injury did that there you know five thousand years ago. Mm. Um, I watched but, uh, it for real. I watched it, Kastuba. It was such a powerful uh, evening you guys all uh, you had together. It was a wonderful night. And and that evening, not only was such an Anand Swami, Raghunath and myself, but Krishna Marari Goswami spoke that evening as well. He's incredible. And, um, so dynamic. Yeah, he's, he's a young man. He's only, I think, around 26. Mm -hmm. But he was born and raised in one of the families that has been worshiping krishna in the temple at nundagram which is the the house that krishna grew up in essentially right mm -hmm. a big it's like totally scenic it's like out of disney or something when you're coming from a distance it's like this hill with like this palace at the top of it you know mm -hmm. and um and so you know for so many generations that seva that service is handed down and you know so essentially this is a person born right into krishna's house he was he Can was uh, the young man. He attended the Guru Kul, the Iskan Guru Kul in Vrindavan, mm -hmm. and uh, and now he's twenty six and he's serving with the with the Iskan devotees at the uh, Govardhan Retreat Center. But he's a person that just all this Krishna Bhakti is just like it's just born right into him. You know, it's like you know he grew <laughs> up in Krishna's house, singing songs about Krishna and everything, everything related to Krishna and loving it, you know? So that Can night- imagine, he gave imagine that being huh? your, the way that you grew up. <laughs> these, are, these are very special people. Special, really special souls. People. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got such a taste of it today, but that night he gave Raghunath and I a special gift, which was a cowbell. Yeah. Where we so each got sweet. a beautiful cowbell. <laughs> That's so nice. <laughs> you know, I was crying here in Vermont. I had like tears coming down <laughs> my eyes for you. I'm like, this is so kind. I was and like, sweet. oh, I don't even know what to say about this <laughs> gift. You know? Yeah. You, you know, and then such an Swami said, you know, Kastuba, you received from the hands of a bridge bossy who grew up in Krishna's house, mm. a cowbell from one of Krishna's cows on the bank of Govinda Kund at the side of Govardhan Hill on the night of Akadashi. I mean, you know, like, or he just Talk went to, you know, during Kartik. Yeah, during Kartik. It's like, there's it just such an auspicious, you know, gift. Moment. Hmm. But today was also just a very special gift where uh, our friend Bhananandini oh, and I, along her. with, uh, she's wonderful, he, he took the two of us on what they call Brudge roaming. Brudge I mean, brudge means that the, the larger area around Vrindavan where Krishna's pastimes took place. Mm. And just roaming around Brudge. You know, you just roam and see what happens and talk about Krishna. So he took us to a place called Sankate. Sankate. That's where we start. Sankate is 
you know, like I mentioned, Krishna's house is way up on this hill. Yeah. And Radha's house is in the town of Varshana, the village of Varshana, also way up on a hill. Mm. And in between is like this, you know, just all like um, agricultural fields. And Sun Kate is right in the middle. And this is where the two of them would secretly meet, you know, ah. Radha and Krishna. They would send wow. signals, like Morse code kind of signals, like with lights, you know, like, okay, meet me here at this time and um you know all of Vrindavan is just the whole thing is just it's it's such a beautiful theology it just goes so so mm -hmm. so deep and it, it'll just make you cry how beautiful mm -hmm. it is mm -hmm. and so he was saying you know we walked from Sun Kate which is right in the middle of the two and we walked all the way to Nandagram and how long does that take point, like how far is that for reference for us. We walked a long time. Um, I, honestly, I don't know in terms of like kilometers or that, but you know, we may have walked for an hour and a half. Huh? Something like that. Maybe it was a little longer. Strolled. Sure. But we sat down and, and then we, we sat down for a long time. Just like, you just sit down there right in the dirt, you know, mm -hmm. because that dirt we consider to be holy, you know, you don't even want to lay down. So you just get right there in the dirt. And, um, but he was telling, he was telling stories, the Leelas, the pastimes of Krishna. Yeah. But he was telling them from songs because they're all told through songs. And this is how he grew up. Just you learn these songs and they tell all the stories of Krishna's pastimes in great detail. Mm -hmm. And the details are as moving poetry as you're ever going to hear. It's very emotional and it's mm -hmm. very sweet. Mm -hmm. So he was, he would sing it in bridge boss, which is the local language. And then he would translate these verses one by one into English. Mm. And he just and like breaks into song and he has this beautiful, yes, voice, right? I've been out. able to be with him. I brought, I went with him once with Raghu to Nandagram and it just was. Just Yeah. No, no, no. Uh, I didn't go there. I went to Nandagram. <laughs> yeah. But I Rumi. was, I was terribly sick, but I still was listening oh. to him and his singing and there's just the I feel like that's what got me through some of the tough times of my digestion but you know right. is and his devotion Kastuba it's like just oh, off the so charts touched. I was so touched so he's ah. he's telling he's singing this song as we're walking barefoot through the dirt through the you know the sandy pathways through the fields wow at a certain point it opened up and there was an underground like the hill I was like oh wow you know and um, so, so this, you know, the story was about how Krishna wakes up in the morning, you know, mm -hmm. and um, how his mother's waking him up, open your eyes, you know, mm -hmm. and, uh, and saying, oh, I, I wish I remember all the details, you know, everybody's, everybody's ready for you, you know, where you got, he was saying like, you know, it's like, um, Krishna's just like, he's just, he's, everything that he does is captivating in its beauty he's manifesting beauty not just because he wants to be beautiful because it's just increasing the love that you feel for him and the love that he feels for you you know he's he's exp he's giving his grace through through his beautiful form and his beautiful pastimes and his beautiful movements and but a lot of it is um especially when he's very young is this kind of like childish naughtiness you know or just like you know like a hard to get control of child he's free He's entirely free and, you know, like his mother's trying to get the bath together, you know, and she's breaking out like all the different, like they didn't have regular soaps back then, but they would have different kind of minerals and powders and things that they would rub on your body. They would mix them with different oils and so mm -hmm. they would get, you know, you know, like on a wood fire, they'd be heating up some water to warm up the water. And, and as soon as Krishna sees that, he's like, I don't want to take a bath, <laughs> you know, and he's like, out of there. you know. Yeah, like, you know, like, Extent. like, uh, like little kids might do, you know, and then his mother's chasing him down. But he's, he's so beautiful as he's being naughty like that, you know, and then she finally gets him and then she's bathing him. And, and, and he was telling the story about how, how the girls from Varshana, they want, or, or the other neighboring villages, they, they're just trying to find any excuse to see Krishna. And so every day, it's almost like spies or something like that. Like they need to get in there. They need to get into the room with him somehow. But, you know, it's, it, they're little girls and he's a little boy and they're not meant to be like 
mixing, you know. Right. Mm-hmm. They have to come up with an excuse, you know. And so then, you know, Krishna's mother's like, oh, oh, darling, you know, like, what are you doing here? I need to see Krishna. Why do you need to see my son? What, what and then, you know, she's got to give some kind of excuse. And so she says, well, because, you know, I sell milk and yogurt every day. And when I take it into the market yesterday, I saw Krishna's face before I went to the market. And I sold twice as much milk and yogurt as I normally do. And I know that it was because I got good luck because I saw his face. So just for the business of the family, you know, just to keep the, the family in order, I, I need to see his face. And, uh, and not only that, you know, not only did we double our income, but also we gave birth to another cow. You know, mm-hmm. and I know that that calf was born, you know, because I saw her. And Mother Show's like, oh, well, I guess that makes sense. Oh, okay. You know, wow, well she's done. like, no, 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 hold it. Uh, I, you're saying that you go and sell milk every day, but you don't have any pots with you. I don't see any pots of milk or anything. Oh, well, I gave those to my girlfriend. <laughs> I gave those to my girlfriend before I came <laughs> running up here. But I tell, I tell you, I swear to you, I, I sell milk every day. Somehow they get <laughs> in the room with Krishna and they see his face. And, they're so their their hearts are just so heavy mm. with this love for Krishna that they just have to figure out a way in there and then they get to look at his face. But it's not only that they want to look at his face, but also they're like spies, just by a glance, just by blinking, just by gazing this way or that way, they give signals. Okay, this is where we're gonna meet today. You know, if I look this way, then that means we're meeting in this grove. If I, I do, just, so they're, they're also sending secret signals back and forth. You know? Secret eye language. <laughs> I'm sorry? A secret eye language. Yes, a- eye language is it's wow. subtle movements. You know, they're sending signals. And he's just, you know, and it was one verse at a time. Then he would sing the next verse, and then he would tell the, the next details. Mm. The beauty of this poetry, what it does to the heart even if it were just mundane love poetry, you would have to say, wow, mm. the details in this actually make me want to cry. It's so beautiful. Did you but cry yesterday? What... <laughs> I think I cried. But Maybe I a little really bit? Touched. I was mm-hmm. really touched. Mm-hmm. And, um, and, and, but the fact that they're tied into such a, such a, um, a fascinating, brilliant, dense, deep, spiritual philosophy as well so there's mm. this the sweetness in the theology there's the depth of the philosophy and it's all tying together and it's all part of a culture to get you to a place where you're not just like i believe in god or i'm a follower of god but i love god <laughs> yeah. from the core of my heart there, mm. i'm just charmed and, and my heart has been won over by this beautiful beautiful person and all the beautiful people that love him i'm you've blown me away this is the most beautiful thing i've ever heard that's where we have to come if 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 we want to go deep you know mm. and right. uh, the and, absence of fear or obligation or having uh, to do this or that or the regulation it's like just this pure love just pure God. love yeah and 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 you really can express that in except through poetry, except through song. Mm-hmm. So that's what Bhagavatam is, you know, especially, you know, you get to that 10th canto, it's beautiful songs. And uh, and he's just kind of grown up in this tradition of the poetry of the great saints of Vrindavan singing their songs. And he's like a walking encyclopedia of it. He's just pouring it mm-hmm. out. But, he's re- but because he grew up right in it, he really has a beautiful sense of how to convey it. And so at a certain point, we just found this tree and we went and sat down under that in the shade of the tree, just right in the, in the dust of the, of the, the fields, like the, you know, like the agricultural fields. Yeah. And, you know, we took out a little prasad and we passed it around a little something to drink and he just kept speaking and speaking. And so he was going on for, we were out there for hours. Mm. And, uh, Banu Nandini, she was a little tired. He said, just lie down right there in the dirt. There's no better place, you know, just you just... Take a nap, take a nap. You're, you're, you're lying in, in the dust of Vrindavan, looking up the sky of Vrindavan and the skyline of Nandagram. And, and, and one of Krishna's sweet devotees is just singing beautiful verses to you, glorifying the beauty of Krishna, the beauty of Radha, the depth of Radha's love. 
And what else is there in life? You, you begin to realize this, this is what life is all about. This is what the real saints of Brudge understood. And we're, our minds are all caught up in so many things, but we're going to feel the real peace and happiness when, we, when our mind becomes deeply absorbed in this divine love. Mm. Wow. What an incredible experience. And like uh, the essence and yeah, that your, your consciousness and your awareness was held there. And, you know, there's so many other things floating around in our world right now. So what a gift to just hear that. Oh yeah. <sighs> yeah. It's like a deep exhale, just listening to you talk. It's like <laughs> we're lost. You're like in the bliss of it. I, you know, it's like, you're sharing that well, with we, us in your description. Then we, then we walked it's not over. It's not over. We, well, <laughs> I forgot. But then we <laughs> walked more. the rest of the way to, to Nunderground, mm. to the village. Mm -hmm. And we went to his home. And, you know, like the home is kind of like almost like an open air kind of like courtyard. I mean, it's very simple. Mm. And it's like, here's my mother. Here's my grandmother. Here's my cousin brother. Here's my cousin, this cousin, that cousin, this, you know, here's the little kids running around here. And, and right in the middle. They all the, live together. They, they all live together. Mm -hmm. And in the middle of the whole scene, and the women are there, they're cooking, they're rolling out rotis, and everybody's mm -hmm. doing it. But in the middle of the whole, you know, in India, they have these uh, like rope beds, you know, like they're just these simple, yeah. almost like macrame. You see them on the side of, of the road, and people are yes. napping in there. Yeah. So in the middle of the open courtyard is one of those little beds. And right in the middle of that bed is the sweetest little baby that you've ever seen in your entire oh. life. So you know, it's just lying there and everybody's around adoring this little, I mean, the baby was born like a few days ago or something. It was really very wow. tiny and young and sweet as anything. And just doing nothing but like lying there. Really you know? Yeah. Yeah. And everybody's, you know, touching its nose and touching its toes. And, <laughs> and you begin to realize this yoga is very different mm -hmm. than like say at Weta Vedanta where it's, you know, it's like, let's nice. analyze that this body is just another baby body. And no, it's like, it's just nothing but love. Mm. But hey, here's another sweet little Krishna. This little baby is Krishna's baby, you know? Yeah. And Krishna is, will grow up as Krishna's friend, you know, from, from Krishna's home village. And, um, and everybody is just, it's just so joyful there. And, and they fed us, you know, delicious prasadam that they cooked. And we just relaxed and um, opened up to each other um, mm -hmm. in a sweet way. You know, these are real villagers, you know, like real, right. you know, just, you know, we, most of them didn't speak English. Mm. Um, but we all are Krishna's devotees. You know, they're, they're like Krishna's family, practically. And we're these weird Western people that somehow love Krishna. <laughs> <laughs> Wandered in here. Yeah. yeah, but you could feel that connection not even through the speaking yes. speaking the same language. That's just felt. Yes. Uh -huh. yeah, we, 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 it's, it's heart to heart connection, no doubt. Banu Nandini is like a member of the family there. Like literally, I can like, imagine. You could just walk in and walk right in and lie down on a bed and go to sleep, and everyone's be like, "Oh, great, Banu Nandini." You know, it's like they're uh, they're very open and very sweet. So it was just a wonderful time. Incredible. What was one of your big like takeaways from the experience? It's just, there's, you know, when I spoke that night um, that we were talking about earlier, Govinda, yeah. I, I kind of was, um, I was paraphrasing a verse from a book by the great, brilliant uh, Vaishnava saint Rupa Goswami mm -hmm. from his book um, Upadesha Amrita which translates as the nectar Devotion. of instruction. instruction. And mm -hmm. it's a small book. I think there's only about, I don't know, 13 or 14 verses in it. Somewhere. It's, it's, it's a small book. Maybe it's 11. 11 verses. Yeah. yeah there's only 11 verses in it. Yeah. And um, I think the eighth verse, it talks about the essence of all advice. Mm -hmm. What is the essence of all advice? If you took all the good advice in the world and you just boil it down, and boil it down and because you know the good advice might be like um hey you know you're not your body so you ought to think about your spiritual life like that's good advice but you boil it down <laughs> you know 
and you get down to something deeper. You know, you get to, you boil that down, it gets something deeper, and you boil that down, it gets something deeper. And when it gets down to the real, the full essence of all good advice, it says is is to, in a sense, leave behind all the mundane, petty concerns of this world, mm -hmm. and meditate on the name, the form, the qualities, and the pastimes of Radha and Krishna and Vrindavan. And go to Vrindavan and learn about that love from someone who knows it, you know, from someone who really understands it. That's the best advice you can get, <laughs> right? That's the essence of all advice. And so, you know, today I had that opportunity, you know, um, someone yeah. who, who grew up in it and who could, for hours on end, sing the poetry of the great saints who saw these pastimes in their meditations. They're not ordinary songs, the depth of, you know, they were seeing this. And he could just sing these songs and just, and translate them and, and explain them in, in beautiful detail. What a gift. You know, what a gift. What a gift. Wow. Incredible. And for anybody that wants a little taste of Krishna Murari Goswami, he's, um, he did the John Mastami episode, right? 1404, right. I think it was with uh, Raghunath. So you could go back and listen to that where he tells the stories of, um, of Krishna on his mm. birthday. Mm. Look at that. On it, Linda. <laughs> <laughs> there she is. <laughs> thank you. Okay. Well, thank you, Kasuba, for sharing all that and bringing um, some of Vrindavan to us here. Well, it's the least I can do. I try to do it at least a little bit. Mm. We'd like to bring you all here and, um, you know, uh, consider coming next year when we when we all come to Vrindavan with us. Mm. All right, shall we get Do into I... Bhagavatam? Let's do it, please. How about I chant the Sanskrit and you chant the English? I would love that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Narayanam namaskritya naram chayva narotamam devim sarasvatim vyasam tato jayam udirayat before reciting the Srimad Bhagavatam, one should offer respectful obeisances unto the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Narayana, unto Naray Narayan Rishi, the supermost human being, unto Mother Sarasvati, the goddess of learning, and unto Srila Vyasadev, the author. Nashta prayeshva badreshu nitam bhagavata sevaya bhagavati uttama shloke bhaktir bhavati nashtiki by regular attendance in classes on the Bhagavatam and by rendering of service to the pure devotee, all that is troublesome to the heart is almost completely destroyed and loving service unto the personality of Godhead who is praised with transcendental songs is established as an irrevocable fact. Om Ajnana Timarandasya Jnananjana Shalakaya Chakshur Unmilitam Yena Tasmai Shri Guruve Namaha I was born in the darkness of ignorance, and my spiritual master opened my eyes with the torch of knowledge. I offer my respectful obeisances unto him. Okay, so today we're reading the Shrimad Bhagavatam, Canto 8, new chapter today, chapter 10. <laughs> yeah. chapter 10, entitled, The Battle Between the Demigods and the Demons. Mm. You ready? I'm ready. Okay. So I'm just going to share a little something before we get into it. Please. And that is that this chapter and the next chapter, in one sense, it, you know, some might say now, every day we read from Bhagavatam and there always seems to be some kind of philosophical wisdom about life and it's something that we can take into our day. These two chapters are just like lots of details about fighting, <laughs> you know, like who fought with who, what kind of weapons they're using, what kind of animals were they riding in this battle and how many heads are getting cut off and, and things like that, you know. Mm. Um, how do we understand it or what's going on? Wasn't this supposed to be a book about, you know, yoga philosophy or bhakti philosophy? And, and it is, but the way, as I read it, and I was really trying to say, what's happening here? Why are we hearing all this detail? It occurred to me that if I were sitting down, like Maharaj Parikha was sitting down for the speaker of Bhagavatam Shukadeva Goswami, and I was hearing all this, it's almost like watching a movie 
the, the details are being shared just like a movie will focus you on details and kind of blow your mind with the visuals. Mm. Battle scenes are, you know, real important in big epic films. And so we get a, we get a, you know, a huge battle scene, a battle scene between these incredible characters doing incredible things. I mean, actually, if, you know, if someone did the real, really good um, cinematic presentation of these chapters, it would blow everyone's mind because you got these incredibly mm. powerful demigods and demons fighting on the backs of all kind of animals, least expected animals, and uh, just like going after each other, you know, like really intensely um, with all kind of unique weapons as well. But the way that I understood it was, especially like this chapter is all of this details there, but because sometimes like in a, in a big epic film, the introduction of characters is really important. And like a very important, Ida. even, yeah, sure, sure. Right, right. It, yeah, and, and here, for the first time, we're gonna see a very important character. And that character is gonna become really important through the rest of this eighth canto. And that's Bali. Bali, Bali the, yeah, Bali Maharaj. Bali, Bali is the grandson of Prahlad, who we read about back in the seventh canto, who is also the son of Hiranyakashipu, who was like the ultimate universal demon. Mm -hmm. So Bali is born in the dynasty of the demons. But mm -hmm. we're gonna see that he goes much deeper in, you know, in even though he's fighting on the sides of the demons, fighting intensely. Mm -hmm we're going to begin to see that he understands something about life and he understands it so deeply that he's able to give everything to God. And when he's, when he's called upon, he's able to, we're even the devas don't really do that. The devas, Hey, Lord Vishnu, we're on, we work on his behalf. You know, we're his people. They, they get that when we're in need, we go to him. Mm -hmm but they don't so much give up everything right from the very core of their heart. Okay, I, I trust in you and I give everything to you. They're, they're more like, we're your devotees and please bless us so that we can enjoy the influence in this world. Mm. But Bali's gonna show us, even though he's born a demon, he kind of eclipses the devas by giving his entire everything to Lord Vishnu without hesitation. Mm. And so he becomes, but, but when we see him, he's not, he's not going to look like a saintly person. He's going to look like the most powerful demonic fighter you've ever seen. He's going to look glorious, but like he's on the wrong side. <laughs> you know? right. So uh, I think, you know, a lot of, of the detail in this is really just kind of capturing our full attention bringing us into the, getting us wrapped up in the scenery of the battle, and then we see Bali. And the impression that we get of Bali should kind of register in our mind and our heart, because he's gonna be such an important character going forward. Wow. Okay. Great setup, Kasuba. Beautiful foreshadowing. And just like you were just talking about with all the detail, love is in the details. It's sort of, we're getting yeah. balance now, we're getting the details of a <laughs> battle scene. Yes. Um, but is it, it's also meant to lead us, right? To it, it, All of this is leading ultimately to the 10th canto, which was the kind of stuff that we were talking about in, you know, in, uh, you know, on our you walk today. Experience. So it's just yeah. in the scene, it's warming us up. It's starting to get some cracks in that, that heart. <laughs> it, yeah. It's, it's going to be that, 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 that if we take Bali, mm -hmm. who's such a powerful demon that he overcomes Indra, overpowers all the devas takes over their planets, takes over the universe. Like th this is like Star Wars kind of stuff. Cool. Um, so that Bali, when called upon, surrenders everything to Vishnu. And that Vishnu is just like an expansion of that little boy <laughs> <laughs> you know, that, that his mother's trying to wake up that's running away because he doesn't want to take a bath, you know? That that's you know the, all of the the previous cantos are 
are helping us understand that when we get to that little boy running around Vrindavan, running around with the girls, running around with his friends, herding the cows, he was telling us all kinds of details. He says there's a book mm -hmm. that describes like Krishna and his friends that had like, like hundreds of games that they would play. They would just run out and roam with the cows all day. And there's so many cows, you can't even imagine. Mm -hmm. And the cows are roaming. and Every day they go to a different area of Raj to graze the, the cows. And meanwhile, the boys just play. So you're surrounded by like all these beautiful cows. And they're just full of love themselves. And then you're playing with your friends. And like there are games like he said, there's a game. Oh, I forget what he said, but like you take one rock and you throw it. And then the next person has to throw a rock and see if they can hit that rock. And if they can hit it, then you then you've got to carry them on your back all the way to that rock. Wow. So and a then more can't, then it's version the of bocce. The more uh, hands-on <laughs> yeah. hands yeah. approach to bocce. <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit more intimate. <laughs> yeah. and, and they're just playing games like this all the time, games where you have to climb the tree, games where you throw the stick, you know, all these different things. But like that how little boy, incredible that the, the, the games have been passed on, like the games yes. were written down, even that they played. Like talk about the level of detail of... Ayush is telling us that that game is called Coco. Coco. <laughs> Coco. Do they, and they still play it. They still play it. Yeah, maybe they do. Yeah, maybe they do. Maybe and, play that um, on your next pil pilgrimage. <laughs> we'll have to try that. You and Raghu <laughs> and do the demo. <laughs> I got to carry Raghu. Oh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and so, um, but that all of this talk of the devas, all the talk of the Sankhya philosophy that we heard in the earlier cantos, all the talk about the great saints, all the battles. All of this is just to help us understand who that little boy is, that from him effortly comes Lord Vishnu, who the universes emanate from the pores of his body, and who then enters into each universe, and from his navel grows a lotus upon, you know, uh, upon his born Lord Brahma, whom he empowers to create you know, all the different species and all the different planets and so on in that universe. And then beyond that, he enters in, he expands a third time as Vishnu to enter into the heart of every living being. All of that is coming from this little boy who's only interested in love. He's not interested in creation, maintenance, destruction. He's not interested in judging. He's not interested in all, all of those duties he gives to either his expansions or to the devas, empowered living beings. What is he doing? He's enjoying the love as his mother's trying to wake him up to chasten him to take a bath. And, and, and with her heart just, you know, it was Govardhan Puja here um, the other day. I mean, yes. I could tell all about that day too. <laughs> you know, like that. It was just, I think I talked about it a little bit on the other show. Yes. But you know, the last verse of that entire description, it's this lengthy description in the in the tenth canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam about this very important Leela of Krishna, in which all the residents of Vrindavan take part, and Lord Indra himself, the world's most successful materialist, just completely is humbled. Mm -hmm. Um the last verse after Krishna puts the hill back, you know, Indra's stopped trying to kill everyone with his thunderstorms, flooding everybody out. He recognized no, puffed up. <laughs> no he's he's bowed his head down and he's he said what did i do he's totally remorseful i tried to kill the sweet baby krishna and all of his beautiful devotees what have i he done? just he couldn't feel any worse and um and then and then everyone just goes back to what they were doing. Krishna goes out with the cows and the cowherd boys and they're, they're doing their play and everybody goes back into the villages. And then it describes the gopis, Krishna's girlfriends. Mm -hmm. Normally they have to keep their love for Krishna under wraps, secret, you know, which intensifies it and increases the thrill in it. Right, secret but, eye language. <laughs> yeah, when I mean, they got all kind of codes and <laughs> messengers. Um, but um, because Krishna had just done something so 
openly mind-blowing. He saved the entire village by lifting a hill and saying, everybody come under. They could express their adoration for him openly. And so as they're going away, they're singing songs about Krishna that they make up on the spot. Mm -hmm. they, they, on the spot, from the cores of their hearts, they're singing beautiful songs. And um, there's a description. Let me see if I can pull it up. There's a description there of, of um, well, just the way that it was described. It's so tender and um, moving that it just caught my attention. And let me see if I can pull it up one second. Okay. Um, Krishna rescues Mother, Indra, Saravi offer prayers. Lord Krishna lifts Gorgon Hill, chapter 25. Text 33. Surrounded by his loving cowherd boyfriends. So this is the last verse after this whole pastime is told. Surrounded by his, his loving cowherd boyfriends and Lord Balaram, his brother, mm -hmm. Krishna went off to the place where he had been tending his cows. That was like, could have been right where I was today. Right? Yep. Probably the cowherd was. girl, huh? Probably was. <laughs> probably was. The cowherd girls returned to their homes singing joyfully about the lifting of Govardhan Hill and other glorious deeds performed by Lord Krishna, who had so deeply touched their hearts. Mm. Who had so deeply touched their hearts. And, you know, if any of us have felt real love in our heart, in our life, you know, there's, there's a feeling in the heart that's unique. And this love that these gopis are feeling is this is love at its deepest level. It's hard to imagine the depth and the weight that they feel in the heart of their feelings for Krishna. Mm -hmm. And they can't help but sing out loud it, um, it, with joy um, to glorify this boy that they love so much. Mm -hmm. They don't think of him as God, even though he just lifted a hill. And even the Lord injured just came right? and, and surrendered to him. They're just like, our boyfriend, look what just happened. Look what you our know, boyfriend like, just did. He's so strong. <laughs> yeah, that's what they're thinking. You know, but their heart's so deeply touched, you know, with a heart so heavy. Srimad Bhagavatam is meant to get us to say, that's all I want. I don't want the things of this world. I don't even want to escape the sufferings of this world. I want to have a heart that feels like that. That's all I'm interested in. I want that for eternity. That's what bhakti is. That's where it leads. That's when we really understood what we're meant to understand through all of our ups and downs in this world. And it's spoken in Bhagavatam. So, but as you were mentioning, th th all this, this battle and all that is so that we can understand who that boy is. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that he's, no, he's not an ordinary boy. Right. And this is an ordinary love. This is a love that's felt for the root of all existence. That, that mm -hmm. the love that we feel in this world because we become attracted to the qualities of a person, that all of those qualities in that person are just a minute speck, uh, just a, a little spark, mm -hmm. a little flash of that quality which exists in beautiful Krishna unlimitedly. Mm. So when we actually get to know him, we will love so deeply that we can't imagine and through him we'll love everyone and that's what we're meant to learn and that's why we read bhagavatam every day that's what we're leading towards yeah because yeah. as you were explaining this sort of like you know even star wars like battle or that it's yeah. all leading us back to the, the pastimes of krishna and vrindavan i'm like you know, something that stuck with me that you and you and Raghu talk about how bhakti is like an exper experiential um, process because hearing some of th these things, it can seem like, really? Or that's a little, how? That's far fetched. How do I? I love Kirtan. I love Japa. I love hey, going to Wisdom of the Sages retreats. I love travel, you know, the food, all these things. But how do <laughs> I like get that? I don't know about that. And even members of our community in Vermont and, and talking about that of like, Bhakti is it, Krishna is it, and I struggle with, with like believing some of the things. And in hearing you share today, it was such a reminder of like, how, when did I start like believing these things? Like, when did I start? And it was in going 
to India and also to some of these places and feeling, you know, what you, what you were describing and like yes. what, how you just described your experience today, I could feel what you were talking about, even if I couldn't picture all of it. Right. right and right. so that is such an, you know, not all of us can go to India and we're at different circumstances in our life. And maybe one day you will, but to be able to hear from people like you, from be able, to be able to hear from people like Sanchananda Swami, right? And yeah. and he was spoke about in that that um, lecture that night that we were, we've been talking about of about the what was it like three keys to to shift from the material yes. to the spiritual perspective. When you're in Vrindavan, yeah, yeah. Always be searching for Krishna. Yeah, was one of them. Um, Conscious hand and everything. See divine arrangement, everything, and whatever you do, try to please Krishna. Beautiful. Right. And then you can start to see from a, a different because we can't see with these eyes like what you just described. You could I I could have been walking through that field and been like, it's dirty, you know, or just, <laughs> whatever it was. If I didn't have Krishna Murari or Bananandini or you with me, right? So um yeah, it's really inspiring what you shared. And also it it's really touching to my heart, right? And that yes. is why we need teachers to guide us in that that way so again that's yeah. the essence of all advice let, let me pull up that verse shall i pull up that verse pull it up please okay nectar of instruction um nectar of instruction One verse second. eight take me a little bit take me just a few a couple of minutes to pull this up nectar of instruction Here yeah it's such a small book and it's so oh oh it it's like what it's, he puts into that book. My goddess. Yeah. <laughs> okay. The essence of all advice mm. is that one should utilize one's full time, 24 hours a day, in nicely chanting and remembering the Lord's divine name, transcendental form, qualities, and eternal pastimes, thereby gradually engaging one's tongue and mind. Mm. In this way, one should reside in Braja. Goloka Vrindavan Dham, and serve Krishna under the guidance of devotees. One should follow in the footsteps of the Lord's beloved devotees who are deeply attached to his devotional service. You know, this is how bhakti works, is you get it from someone that has it. Yeah. It's, it's so important that this, that we understand that this isn't just a religion that you join. It's, it's really not that at all. It's no, it's not. It's, it's a process for learning to love that beautiful being that is the the root of all existence that we all have an eternal connection to. How do you love that person? And this is basically just a way of learning about that person and learning how to feel that love. And mm -hmm. it's not something that you do by your own power. And it's not something that you do mechanically, but it's something that you that you open yourself up to and receive from sources that have it. Now, the Bhagavatam is one source that has it. The Holy Name is one source that has it. And especially mm -hmm. if we can associate with people that have some depth to their devotion and we can hear from them and we can learn from them, well, that's the essence of all advice. Go and find that. Otherwise, we can be part of a beautiful society and we can you know feel good about that but the real love net the spark never really catches you know and this goal of all existence never really takes off in the heart so we need to learn to be eager for that you know we need to learn to like the way that we want other things in life <laughs> you know maybe we want <laughs> You know, a lot of people are looking for that perfect mate or a lot of people are looking for something else to satisfy them in life. Yep. To fill that God-sized hole. <laughs> yes, exactly. But mm -hmm. actually, to, with, with that kind of eagerness or even a more intense eagerness, to just want to, to break out, you know, to break the chains that have bound us for so many lifetimes, break free, break... The, the, the mental loops and programming that has held us down and kept us, kept our focus 
in mundane areas and in very self-centered areas for who knows how many lifetimes. I want to break it once and for all, not just not just um, theoretically, not just posing as a person that gets it, but I want it to break so that this love can awaken in me, this real love. And I want to feel it as these, um, as you know, the gopis felt. They want to, you know, I want to have a heart that's been deeply touched, you know. Mm. And Kusuba, how do we learn to want to desire that by, by reading Bhagavatam, by reading Shastra, by association, oh. by you know all what? these things and it, yeah and, and again it's back to that association with people that that have it on some degree and learn to treasure that association um more than anything else you might treasure in this world you know i, I feel that way with Srila Prabhupada, you know just reading it from his books but i also feel it you know from his disciples and his followers that have changed my life and i can as much as the next person you know you know especially it's not that you have to come here to Vrindavan, but it's tremendously helpful. <laughs> and it is. You, you, yeah, you can be anywhere in the world, but it, it's special to come to that place in the world that's just dedicated to feeling that love, to exploring that love. Uh, it, it, is, it, it, can, you know, it, it is a game changer, you know, but, but, um, but we should, it, it's, I'm as prone as anyone else to getting distracted from that goal allowing mm -hmm. myself to be distracted, but we have to keep trying to keep moving forward step by step, you know, read these books, learn these books, understand these books well, um, and then go, and, and we'll find that even just in Prabhupada's books, there's so many places where this, the depth of this love is described in detail that is so beautiful and so deep that we can't even begin to penetrate it try to penetrate it, try to go deeper into it, try to go deeper and go going as deep as you can into it. See if you feel something and then take that inspiration and then chant, you know, mm -hmm. with bring that, bring that inspiration into your chanting and not in any kind of mechanical way or like you could just figure it out, but just close your eyes, bring your, bring your awareness to your heart and vibrate that name loud and clear, you know, with, with your mouth and into your ears and, and just, just try to be open, you know, and, and then see where you get and, and step by step by step by step, we try to go deeper, 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 deeper until, until we, when we chant that name, we're crying, you know? Hmm. Yeah. Ah, yeah, yeah, Suba, yeah. You and you and Raghunath are also those, those type of, devotees those people that can bring us to that deeper oh, oh, and, and at least we could try to link you know link you with these great souls link mm -hmm. you with these great texts link you with these great saints link you with these great devotees um and that's that's kind really of incredible. We see that our that our role yeah we never got to read the chapter i know but we were just riding <laughs> on the wave of your bob that's all we needed today for bill <laughs> you're you're inspiring me <laughs> you're inspiring me. Oh my God. I, I asked you a few questions, but you just, you took us, you took us right by your side and in that field. And, um, well, that's that. because the people were taking me today. They were just taking me for a ride. Mercy. But Linda, did, did you manage to take, get some takeaways for today? I did. I feel like, okay, today, great. <laughs> I feel like today was like a spiritual Valentine's episode, you know, All right. every, wow. every, Every takeaway is is about you know the deep love and and joy of uh, right, of Krishna. Yeah. So all right, let's hear it. Let's hear it. Okay, Krishna is manifesting beauty because it increases the love felt by him and us. Mm. Love is in the details. Yes, it is. When you love deeply, you can't help but sing out with joy for Krishna, just like the gopis. Oh, mm -hmm. you get bhakti from a source that has it. That's right. Desire to have a heart that's been deeply touched. Mm. That's, that's what we need. And yeah. dun, dun. <laughs> everything <laughs> emanates from sweet baby Krishna. All right, well. sure mm -hmm. Including the song that we normally play that I forgot to line up. Because we were <laughs> we're so wrapped up in, uh, in that feeling that uh, we forgot to take up the music. Yeah. yeah I got it. 
think I got it. Come on. There we go. And Raghu is hiking in the hills of Nepal somewhere, connecting with sweet baby Krishna. <laughs> who knows? Who knows what he's experiencing right now? Or it's nighttime. It's nighttime where you are, actually. So he's probably well, not. Well, it's uh, evening. It's 6.30 p.m. Okay. Hopefully he's eating Prashad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Marajee. <laughs> he's got a yak. And, uh, you know, he's sitting by a fire, probably, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> heating up some kind of simple meal. Mm. And, um, Ew. <laughs> yeah. passing it around and sharing Krishna stories, something like that. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. Actually, that crew that travels with him, Arjun, who is the, um, the, guide. the guide, yes, guide, and all the Sherpas, like, do all the cooking every night. And it's, they are, it's amazing, Prashad. It's so delicious. And to know that it's coming from them, that they've wow. served like the pilgrims all day, it's it makes it really, really special. Wow. Yeah. Linda, did you go last oh, year? Man. I went in 2022. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. It's a great pilgrimage. But you'll be back with them tomorrow at 7 a.m., right, Kastuba? Back with Raghu and Mara? Um, that's right. <laughs> I hope, as long as they are. <laughs> But I will be. <laughs> so we think show Thanks tomorrow for, uh, at 7 a.m. Yeah, so we're back tomorrow. That's right. All right, everybody. Thank you all so much. I enjoyed spending this time with you. Thank you, Kishori Gopi, for coming on the show today. And thank you, thank Linda, you for, for having holding me. things down for now. Hi, hey, Paul. Hi, hey, Krishna. Have a beautiful uh, day. It's a beautiful day for a beautiful day. <laughs> Let the magic flow. Mm.